This, this is the earth, the real earth, the earth that governments have been trying to hide from their plain sight, the earth that, if revealed, will change the course of history. The photos of the earth we've taken that show a blue marble, all CGI. What about the Apollo missions, sending astronauts to space, or the International Space Station, whatever that is. That was all shot in a facility right down here on Earth. What about gravity and all that? Pure nonsense, of course. You might think the Earth is round, but I don't really think so. Okay, let's get back to reality. There are people out there who actually believe this. All of this, allegedly was re-sparked several years ago by what may have been a couple of memes. But now, now it's a full-blown conspiracy with international conventions dedicated to expanding this growing group of so-called flat earthers. Now, I know what you're all thinking. This is absolutely insane and ridiculous. We have tons of empirical evidence that the earth is round. Evidence that is over 2,000 years old, such as evidence from this guy, who has a theorem named after him. And you're right. I would completely agree with you. In fact, this conspiracy perplexed me so much, I went down a rabbit hole watching videos about Flat Earth on YouTube, even going as far as to watch a Netflix documentary about Flat Earth. A terribly fruitless use of my time, mind you. But I enjoyed it. It was almost an addiction. I enjoyed feeling superior, feeling a little cathartic while watching someone humiliate themselves with total confidence, ridiculing these people, and feeling a sense of the hopeless nature of humanity, then blaming it on these pathetically unhelpable people who are the result of our failure to properly educate these people and give them reason. This is actually what I thought and what many people still think about people who believe in seemingly absurd conspiracy theories. As I explored this topic further, purely for my amusement, that is, I stumbled upon this graphic, a graphic of the Dunning-Kruger effect, and it intrigued me. The Dunning-Kruger effect is the relationship between competence and confidence, especially among beginners, where Dunning and Kruger found that beginners vastly overestimate their competence compared to more competent individuals who underestimate their ability. Based on where the flat earthers sit on this graph, pretty sure you know what the problem is. <laughs> they have little to no experience in the subject. That is basically all math and science, but therefore are really confident in it because they believe it is as simple as that. They aren't necessarily dim-witted or insane. No, they are just inexperienced and may not have an adequate understanding of these subjects. But we are all inadequate in some way, shape, or form, so the Dunning-Kruger effect applies to all of us. For instance, a lot of us are incompetent in medicine, except for the doctors, nurses, and medical professionals. <laughs> Yet a lot of us may believe and possibly advise to do crunches every day to get a six pack. The ugly truth is, you also need to go on a diet. <laughs> or, back in 2020 in the pandemic, when a certain figure claimed hydroxychloroquine will cure COVID-19. That ended well. Okay, so why should we, the smart intellectuals, care if some tiny percentage of people believe in the flat earth. It turns out millions of people believe in such absurd conspiracy theories, an even more notable one than flat earth being the anti-vaccine conspiracy, which has caused the resurgence of measles in the United States. Or a more recent conspiracy, that 5G networks can infect you with the coronavirus, and that tinfoil hats Yes, tinfoil hats can protect you. Due to the Dunning-Kruger effect, people who are some of the least competent are also some of the most confident. And so with their confidence, they 
are deemed more trustworthy and therefore can convince other people who are not informed to also believe in the conspiracy theory. This is eerily similar to what we see in debates or possibly even in legislation, a great example being the former president of a global superpower, where amateurs, with their confident explanations, can gain the trust of a crowd, while more experienced people with a much lower level of confidence are much less likely to be persuasive. Experts do have a higher confidence, as you can see on the graph. However, it is no match for our beloved flat earthers, is it? Due to um, the Dunning-Kruger effect, we might all perpetuate misinformation. We might all perpetuate that in order to get a six pack, you need to do crunches every day. But of course, that's not true. And these traits that we find in conspiracy theorists, ignorance, skepticism, hostility, are consequently what we find in us when we're dealing with conspiracy theorists. We alienate them through ridicule, and we make them defensive, escalating the conflict to the point where their very sense of self-righteousness and their very identity is on the line. Okay, so that raises the question, why do people believe in conspiracy theories in the first place, some that seem incredibly nonsensical? Well, there are many reasons as to why people form conspiracy theories, theories uh, namely to explain seemingly unusual phenomena. For instance, the Earth seems flat to us, therefore it is logical to assume that it is flat. But as to why people continue to believe in conspiracy theories, despite the almost insurmountable evidence there is to counter them, there are a couple of reasons. One, that people are arguably fundamentally intuitive, not rational. Jonathan Haidt, in his book, The Righteous Mind, said that people don't really think in the scientific method intuitively, that is, viewing evidence and making decisions based upon that evidence. Instead, we find evidence that corroborates our preconceived beliefs to be true to support that feeling of being right or wrong. Conspiracy theorists are just an obvious example of this. And two, people might continue to believe in conspiracy theories just because they want to have a purpose in life, where they are the woke or smart ones, and everyone else are the puppets of corrupt leaders and organizations who want to hide the true meaning of life and control the population by indoctrinating everyone. It's a desire to be the savior or part of the saviors, or to be the main character in a dystopian story, because we can't handle the insignificance of our mundane lives. But there is still hope, believe it or not. Jason Lorato, for 20 years, was a self-proclaimed poster child for all things anti-vax. And when the COVID vaccines were rolling out, he refused to get them. A lot of people tried convincing him to get the vaccine, saying that people are dying because of your actions, or that you will die, shoving it down his throat that he is wrong to not get the vaccine. Nothing worked. It wasn't until he had a slow, sincere conversation with someone that he trusted that his 20-year conviction just faded away. He said in a CBC interview that, quote, they were very sincere instead of making, being pushy or making my thoughts seem ridiculous. It is compassion and sincerity that persuaded him to vaccinate. He further said, if my mind changed, other people's can too. What we've also seen in this pandemic is in the US, 319,000 unvaccinated adults have died from COVID-19 as of 2022, most of whom voluntarily refused to get vaccinated. While a lot of people, including me, ridiculed them for being so stupid and ignorant. Science shows us that all of us are somewhat susceptible to believing in these conspiracy theories. And anyway, whether it was an anti-vaxxer or just another unfortunate person to have died from this <coughs> lives have been lost. And that is truly a failure of our society, alienating such people and just causing divide between communities. Instead of ridiculing conspiracy theorists, we must approach them with compassion and understanding. Because internally, our psychology is very similar, if not fundamentally the same. We must all understand that people come from different places and have different
different experiences, but that just because they have a different worldview, one that may be harmful, it doesn't mean we should shut them out or ridicule them. If you do want to convince a conspiracy theorist to change their worldview, then again, your best bet would be to approach with compassion and understanding, not shoving it down their throat that they are wrong and putting them on the defensive. That leads to further divide, which counterintuitively makes them refuse anything coming from your side because of how we've ridiculed them. And they will cluster up in similar communities of like-minded people, therefore falling for even more conspiracy theories that have the potential to do harm. And wouldn't you all agree, dividing and alienating each other is simply inhumane. Our, our pursuit of a just and peaceful world will fail if we isolate people and lose our humanity over what may end up to just be another petty argument, such as whether the earth is flat or not. So next time, instead of ridiculing conspiracy theorists, I would like you all to imagine how it would be like to be one. Because we all think the same under the surface. And if you ridicule them for being stupid, you might as well ridicule yourself. Thank you.